Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be making a small table for my laptop that overheats. So what I've got is I'm just using some leftover mouldings. So it's got the rounded edge at the top. So what I've done is on the moulding you'll see it's got a two different size lines and then an indent and then another raised line. So what I've done is I've shaved out this section so that the computer sits, has got a little bit of a grip on it so it doesn't just slide off. So I just took a plane and took out that one line. Then I've cut them. The distance for my particular computer is 38 centimeters by 28 centimeters and then I've cut them at 45 degree angles and I've got a little piece of wood that I'm going to put in the side there to give me an absolute square then I've taken another piece of the molding and cut it by five centimeters by five centimeters so on the reverse side of this one we're going to be putting it like that and as you see the one side is rounded so I'm going to take a rasp and I'm going to round the other side so that it matches. So we only need to do the two outside sides. The two insides is not that important. Then I'm going to just use this boncrete glue and some panel pins and put it all together. When it comes to doing the rounding, what I've done is I've measured the distance from the tip over here to where it actually curves which works out to three millimeters and I've drawn a line at the top there so what you're going to do is you're going to rasp it all the way from there rounded so you get the same distance on the sides now working with MDF please wear a mask because it's very very poisonous so now we're going to take the sides of all four of our little pieces so we've got two sides that are rasped and two sides that are not done which will our supports for the legs so when you're doing the rasping what you're aiming for is to reach that line that you've drawn in by just moving the rasp at a 45 degree angle across the top of it like that I've rasped the four corners and now I'm going to just take a sandpaper and smooth them all out. When you're doing your little corner pieces, make sure that you're doing the right sides that are going to be facing outward, outward, so they're all like facing outward because you don't want to have them the wrong way round but you've got it facing inward and the flat side on the outside. So just make sure that you've got them facing the right way round. Everything is dry now panel pins are in and now on the reverse side I flipped it over and I've taken our pieces that we cut the square ones and the round that we've rasped on the side pre-drilled holes countersunk them and put the screws in on all four of the sides so now they're ready to receive the legs so before we actually put the legs on we're going to paint it now when you're working with MDF MDF absorbs paint so you really need to put a base coat down or a primer. I'm just going to be using a flat paint because that seems to work for what I need it for. I've primed the little table and now I'm actually going to be painting it in a white acrylic. Normally you would use an enamel or an eggshell on wood but because I wanted to match the legs I'm painting it in a white acrylic. For the legs I've just taken these empty cartridges from the caulking gun. I like to use the plastic ones because they're a little bit stronger. And then I've just painted it so that it looks like I have marble legs for my table with easy marbling. I've just got these spent or used caulking gun cartridges and I'm going to just marble those. So we have got four little legs. So I'm just putting a base coat down of white and then on that 
that's dry, I'll come back and show you what else to do. As you can see, because it's a cylindrical object, what I've got is a broomstick, which I've just balanced it on so that it's easy for me to just rotate it as I want to paint. The paint that is on the cylinders is slightly showing through. So what I'm going to do is put two coats of white acrylic paint on it. So I two coats are dry now. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some of that, this low sheen acrylic white paint and I've mixed it up with a little bit of black to give me three different shades of grey. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to apply. Um, for the marbling effect I've got this really really tiny tiny little brush. You can use a feather as well. I find this one works quite well for me. What you're going to do is just take some white paint and just pretty much squiggle it on. Then take one of the lighter colour greys and just dab it in a few places. And you're going to take a brush and just blend the colours together. So. so just dabbing it and swirling it in between. Try and use the paint that is a little bit wet. If it's not wet enough, just add a wee bit more paint. So all you're doing is just dabbing it on. And just rotating. Now to do the veins, you take your small little brush and just wherever you want to put something, try and rotate the brush so it can create some really really nice shapes and then you just go around the whole cylinder and complete it the same way. So now in some of the places where the veins are you take the same little brush and then just add some white as well just to give it a little bit of a contrast. So that's what it's looking like at the moment. So now what I've done is I've taken some white paint and I've made it very, very watery. So that when we paint it on, it just gives us a very, very, very small light coat. If you're happy with your post just like that, this step is optional. I like to sort of like blend it a bit better. So when you put it on, it just softens it a little bit so that it looks not quite as harsh. As you can see, that one's been done and this one hasn't been done. So there's just a slight difference in the harshness. Now that everything is dry, we put in there a clear coat. So I've got um, a can of Squirt's Gloss Clear, and all you have to do is just put a coat of that on. If you want it a little bit more shiny, put two coats on. I've got a plastic straw here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut it in half here, and then I'm going to slice it up the side of the one. So I've got a piece of tubing the wire to slot into and I'm going to just glue it onto the side of the table. I've attached this straw to the side and I've given it one coat of white acrylic paint. Now I'm going to marble it. You use the same method for doing the legs as you would for the top. I've marbled one side now I'm just waiting for that to dry and then I'll turn it over into the other side. 
as you can see, this is a rather nice looking marble. I finished marbling both sides now. So that's where the computer will sit, and then that's the base. If it was just a little table to sit on the table, that would be perfect. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it with clear acrylic lacquer. So I'm using this particular one, which is a KNH, which is an acrylic lacquer color, and it's clear, and you just thin it down with an all-purpose thin it. You can also use a spray can if that's what you want. To give it a really nice shiny finish I normally put on three coats which is what I'm going to do now. As you can see it has a brilliant shine to it now. Next thing we're doing is I've got my drill bit and I've taken a size 13 wood bit and I've just marked it off for the distance of what the insert of that particular pipe is going to be. And I've drilled holes into the four corners like that. Now we're going to just screw the legs on. So now what you're going to do is you're going to just glue them in. I'm just using this Bondcrete, which is a wood adhesive. And then all we're going to do is screw our pipes in like that. And now you have your little table. So just screwing it in. And now we have a little table with the marble legs. And all ready to keep the computer from overheating really hope this helped you out if you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up really appreciate it if you would subscribe thank you so much for watching